Welcome back to The Big Show. It's Alex Belfield on Broadway, and it's always nice to come to the New Amsterdam Theatre, which is probably the most beautiful theatre in the world. It's home to Mary Poppins, but we're not talking about Mary Poppins today. We're talking about The Lion King. Why are we here? Uh, we're here because you want to talk about The Lion King. <laughs> and and uh, Zazu, maybe. I don't know. I do. Cameron Powell is really one of the greatest West End and Broadway stars. I'll tell you why, because you're a personality. What I like about you is you're different and you stick out and you're memorable. It seems like now they create the most amazing stars, but you can't remember their names. I love you, I just fell in love with you. <laughs> well, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> well, right back at you. Congratulations on being you because you've got a part in a play which is brilliant before you even start. So it's then what you bring to the party. And I've seen so many people try and do Zazu and do it sometimes better than others. But you really are the character and you seem to get into it because it's difficult, isn't it? Because we're watching you and something above your head. Yeah, it's uh, what Julie Taymor has termed this the double event, which means that you get to see a puppet in, in, in its workings and the worker working the puppet. So you get the puppeteer and the puppet. And the idea is you'll get the, the beauty and the majesty of that puppet and the character, and then you'll get to see the actor actually giving you some sort of emotion and some sort of, you know, something, a little bit of oomph. I always love seeing The Lion King, and I've probably seen it five million times with various casts. It's got great heart and it's got great fun. That's really what you need in a Broadway play, isn't it? Something to make you laugh and cry within 10 minutes. Absolutely, absolutely. And this does have everything because it's, you know, it's got, it's got all of the traditional um, Broadway and West End themes to it. You know, the music, the dancing, the singing, the great, the great songs and comedy, but it's also got this extra element, which, um, which is the puppetry and the, the spectacle of the show. So every scene is kind of interesting and unique that you won't see anywhere else. So yeah, it's, it's kind of got all, all of those things going for it. Cameron, why you? Why are you the one that gets to go from the West End to Broadway on tour, back to Broadway, occasionally in the West End and back to Broadway again? I'm that good. No, I'm not. It's, uh, it, uh, I am lucky enough that I actually came to the States uh, through different work and I ended up with a green card, got myself into a dual nationality situation. So I've done a lot of work over here in the States as an actor. And uh, when I got into The Lion King, they had a, the need and an opening with uh, Zazu character in the West End. and. I have my passport still, so they let me go back and work in my home country, which was just such a thrill and an honor. It's crazy, because when I look at your CV, you've done things like King Lear and Tempest, proper plays in some people's view, yeah. and now you're in musical theater. How do the RSC lot regard you doing musical theater? Um, <laughs> um, it's, it's a curious thing, the acting community. Um, they. Uh, it's something that I, I never expected to get to musical theatre in my wildest dreams. So it's opened my eyes to this whole new uh, spec, you know, thing that I can now do. Um, I think I think actors can be a little snobby about it, but I think that's slowly being broken down because there are more and more musicals that are employing actual people with acting backgrounds um, into their their casts, and uh, and we can get away with this character singing that we like to call singing, but it's really <laughs> speaking in a sort of tuneful way. What are you then? Are you a great actor in this, a great singer in this, a great dancer in this, or a puppeteer? Ah, I'm um, a reasonable at everything. <laughs> <laughs> Because it is a mixture, isn't it? I mean, the physicality of Zazu is the great thing, but of course, delivering the lines and the comic timing. I, I kind of feel you're the narrator in this. You carry the whole thing through. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. I'm kind of the, the through line in a way. Um, I, I kind of connect a lot of the characters to, to the other characters. I, the core of what I am as an actor, um, I think the rest of it is, is built on top. Um, and I'm lucky enough to work with some, have worked with some wonderful people that have got me to a place where I feel confident enough to do it. I mean, I did a lot of, of physical theatre. Um, which involved a little bit of, of throwing myself around stages and um, a little bit of singing. So I came into it with a little bit of a background that I think allowed me to bite off more than I was going to chew, really. Mm. So. And the other thing about you is you've got some nice lines that are for the dads and the kids won't get, but they're a little bit mocky, but in a Disney way. Yeah, they, they, they um, yes, they're lovely because they, they work for the adult audience and the kids don't get it. But what I love to hear is the kids laughing the loudest because they think they should. <laughs> they don't really get the joke, but they're, they're the ones laughing the loudest because they hear their dad laughing. So it's wonderful. What's your favorite song in the show? The one that, I, that sticks in my mind is Hakuna Matata. And The Morning Report would have been my, my favorite because that was my song, but um, we no longer have that in the show. But uh, the Hakuna Matata, I think, has to be my favorite song. They've taken out The Morning Report? Yes, yeah, they have. When they, did they do that? <laughs> they did that this last June. I think it benefits the show because it makes things move along a little bit faster. Um, they did it for the Vegas production of, of Lion King, and uh, there's been a few little edits here and there, which, 
you know, Julie Taymor came, came back in and re kind of worked the show. So it's come, they've come up with this, you know, they, they trim the fat basically. So now we have a. But you mustn't look at Vegas. They want you to get back in gambling, getting drunk, and ending up in a hospital somewhere. You can't take them as your standard, can you? That would be my argument. <laughs> Cameron Powell, I'm going to take the morning report because I still think it's a great song. We're back on the big show with Cameron Powell. He's the star of The Lion King. Well, that's not true. There's a lot of stars, but there's only a few characters that are really memorable. We look forward to you and then we look forward to Pomba and to Moan, don't we? We do. Uh, and why? Because they have the funny lines. Uh, they, are, they are the sort of uh, comedic element to the show so they are definitely the kids favorites um, which is the reason you're probably being going along to the show in the first place um, yeah we have some great things to, to do I, I think I'm lucky because I probably get to ad lib more than the other the other two guys but um, that also has its downside because when things go wrong I'm usually the one stuck in front of the curtain trying to kill some time if things do go wrong which they never do of course and that's the thing about the show it's quite old now I mean it's 10 years in the West End it's even older on Broadway but it still looks spectacular it was way beyond its time wasn't it it was uh, and they are incredibly meticulous about keeping the show fresh and keeping it up to date um, so they're very good about um, coming in and giving a lot of clean up rehearsals so as much as we might gripe about it it's actually yeah, the cast really does appreciate that at the end of the day because it keeps everyone on their toes and you, you really get to be thinking about it and, uh, and I don't think a lot of shows do that they kind of leave it and let it go but we have resident directors on the shows on each and every show that um that is there to just keep keep us remembering what we're supposed to be doing up there i suppose the dodgy thing for disney is there's an expectation you've got to deliver every night and although it's your five millionth performance because you've been in this forever i'm spending 120 bucks and i want a proper show don't i Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's obviously the, the, uh, a thing that we bear in mind as well. I mean, you, you've, you're paying a lot of money to see these shows. So you want to, do you want to be seeing the best that there is? So you have to give it 100% every night. Does that feeling ever become normal when you walk up Broadway and you see The Lion King on this side and the other side? There's just a new Disney store open, which is forever promoting The Lion King. And of course, the <laughs> theatre is just across the street. Uh, you can't go within 100 paces of Broadway and not see something about The Lion King. And it's all about you. You're in it. Yeah, it's a very surreal experience. You sort of, because every now and again you will forget that you're what you do for a living and what what you're in, and and then you'll be walking down the street and there's a taxi with Lion King written all over it, or a bus with it painted all over it, or even a train station. When I went to go from Penn Station the other day, there's just images of the Lion King everywhere. So. It's, you know, they do a good job in uh, keeping it at the forefront of people's minds. We're back on the big show, Belfield on Broadway, here on 42nd Street and Broadway at the uh, New Amsterdam Theatre. That's home to Mary Poppins. There's two big shows left now, Mary Poppins and The Lion King, and they seem to be doing gangbusters. It's nice that there's something for the kids, because Broadway can just aim at old people who are very rich and just want serious plays. <laughs> that's true. Uh, that's true. And, they, and then there are plenty of those shows out there for them. Uh, it is aimed at kids, but, you know, it's also... It, it really does appeal to the generations. Um, and primarily because, you know, you, you might have been a child when you saw the movie in 94, but now you're an adult, maybe with kids of your own, you're going to want them to see this as well. So. And it's a story about heart, isn't it? It's the love of a father and a son and taking the right path in life. It's, it's just a love story. It is. It's, it's a story of self-discovery, of responsibility, of community. It's all these different factions of the Savannah that are coming together good versus evil it's it's sort of we can all get along and that's a message that is as apt today as it ever was so uh you know it's going to appeal to a uh, family is going to want to see it for for uh, for those reasons we just played akuna matata and that means no worries what kind of worries do you have going into the theater every day that it's going to be fresh and you're going to want to perform because you've done this a long time now wow um i worry that i'm going to keep it fresh i mean i i I think a big worry is, is that something will go wrong. But you know, when that happens, it also actually makes it much more alive. So, so sometimes it works to your advantage, you know, if that, if that does occur. And, and it's never a big thing that will go wrong. It's certainly things that we practice. We even have these contingency plans in place so you can kind of kick into another gear. But um, there's always, you always have that little edge, that little bit of nervousness. And that's, that's a good thing. I think when you lose that, you need to, to move on to something else. How much through the show can you stick in of your own? Is there room for that or is that just only when stuff happens? There is. And I think I'm, I'm probably the luckiest uh, actor in that respect that um, there are moments in, that are built into my performance where you can actually um, throw in some ad libs here and there. Um, obviously, it's Disney. You can't. You can only you can. There are certain <laughs> words you can use and certain words you can't. Um, but I'm lucky in that respect, particularly in the, the Can't Wait to Be King number. There's a lot of. Um, uh, singing and, and, and movement in that piece and they like me to actually have throw some comments out to the ostriches and when I'm chasing the children around so so I'm, I'm lucky 
Tell me about you. Let's do a bit on your past. You're from Wales. I'm actually born in Wales, but I actually grew up in Lincolnshire. Um, uh, and my family's from Scotland. So, and my sister now lives in London. So we're kind of from all over. We kind of cover the British Isles. But, but I was born in Wales, but from a, a service family, a Royal Air Force family. So. so I suppose with the Royal Air Force, you're happy to move where you need to be. Is this home now, New York? Um, it is. Uh, it is home for me now. Um, I've only really come to that realization lately. Um, I've always imagined that I would be moving back to England, um, which I would like to do at some point. But for the moment, um, New York's home. What's better, being on tour with the show or actually being able to have a fridge with your own food in it in your own apartment in New York? <laughs> I'm a bit of a gypsy. I really actually enjoy the touring life and moving around from place to place. But when you've done that for a few years, you do appreciate coming home and, and having a place and, and not having to live out of a suitcase. So I can kind of do both, but right now I'm happy where I am. The theatre you're in, of course, is right on the, in the centre of Broadway. It's every actor's dream, I suppose, to get there. When you go to some of the provinces, do you get the same reaction? Because the energy, I think, on Broadway, I don't know whether you would agree, is, is louder and bigger sometimes than in the West End. I think it is. I think that's true. Um, I think in the West End, I don't know what kind of comment this is on the audiences, but you're probably more likely to get a tomato thrown at you if they don't like the show. But when you get a standing ovation, you really feel like you've earned that. Um, which is wonderful. Um, and I think here, I think in America, you get a very a more boisterous enthusiasm to every show. Um, so you're talking about levels of enthusiasm as to where, where, your, where your hallmark is for what you're gonna judge, whether it was a good show or not. Um, and of course, both New York and the West End are actually built up a lot of tourists um, come to see the show. So I think in, in, on Broadway, you have a lot more non-English speaking people. So you can hear them reacting more to the spectacle and to the physical comedy. And in London, I think they, they probably the wordplay is a little bit more responsive. And in terms of your accent here, does it go down well? Because just being in town for a few days, I do this twice a year. They do like the English accent, don't they? They do. And I find when I'm speaking to a fellow Brit that I start going back into my English. And then I'm talking to an American and I'm, I slowly start to get a drawl. And what about when you get the big stars in? Because, of course, you never know who's in the audience. Does that add, a, add an extra edge? It does. Uh, some people don't like to be told when someone's in, you know, because um, it might affect their performance. Uh, I like to imagine that I don't want to be told, but I really do. Secretly, I do. Because it's just, you know, particularly if I get some ad-libs, you know, you never know, I might be able to throw something their way that, that makes people laugh. But uh, it does. It, it always gives it a little extra edge, of course. This is the same when you have family and, you know, it's going to just give you a little extra scare. And that's the thing about this show. It's both fun and funny and at times scary. I interviewed Derek Smith, who played Scar just after 9-11, and he said there was nothing worse that first show back when the hyenas came through the audience and what had just happened here in New York. I mean, it, it is dramatic, isn't it? It is very dramatic. Um, it really does. But I think, again, that's, that's one of the reasons I think this show is so successful, because it works on these different levels and it will pull at the heartstrings when you least expect it. Um, whether it's just a single musical note or if it's just the thing that you're, you're witnessing, the, the, the spectacle of it, the idea of your, your father's. I mean, my, my father passed away uh, nine years ago. And every time I see Mufasa sink down on that, uh, uh, on his, what would you call that, a pyre, a funeral pyre. Um, and I only see it from the wing every, every now and again. And it, just, it immediately, you know, gives me a, a little shiver up the spine. So, yeah, it pulls on your, your heartstrings in those ways. And of course, the song that's most famous is Can You Feel the Love Tonight, which we're going to end with. Cameron, really lovely to talk to you and congratulations. You are totally unique and it's not surprising they've taken you with the show on tour. They've taken you to the West End and of course Broadway. There's still Vegas to go. Would you be interested in that? <laughs> um, Why are um, you laughing? I, I don't know. <laughs> only, only if I can have a lot of feathers and sequins. There's I, loads I, of buffets there. I mean, there's, there's lots to do. <laughs> there, there, that's true. That's true. Um, that's probably about it though, right? And maybe, maybe a little gambling. But. Cameron Powell, thank you so much for talking to us. He's the big star of Zazu the character we all love to watch through the whole thing in The Lion King here on Broadway. Real pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And you too. Thank you so much.